Hello, everybody. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. I'm back again with Stephanie from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. We've got quite a show for you guys today. How are you doing today, Stephanie? Doing great. It's a very weird week. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. I just got off with Catherine Edwards, and you guys, uh, you, I don't know if that video will be uploaded before this video. We'll see. She'll probably upload it to her channel as well. But we, Catherine and I spoke about that as well, that it's been a very, um, well, you know, Stephanie and I talk all the time, like, Holy shit. I mean, that's the veil is super thin. I feel like uh, the grounds kind of are the carpets kind of been pulled out from underneath both of us in a lot of ways in different ways. Yeah. Um, and I was saying that with Catherine, it's like, you know, we have this whole idea, this whole idea of like reality versus expectation. And most of us have these like expectations throughout life. And then the reality never really meets the expectation. Sometimes and a lot of times the reality is better than the expectation. But when you have something so you, you thought you had something so concrete in your life, and then all of a sudden, when that is not so concrete anymore, it can bring up some emotions, can it? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And I think I think uh, the universe is, is purging a lot of negative um, past uh, traumas and things that we've had to work on so that we're, we're, we're ready. Yeah. Well, and that's what I told Catherine too. A lot of this, the reactions, I know for me at least, like, and I've spent most of my whole adult life working on this, but like how much your mind plays into like your overall well being, you know, yeah. and, and, and these like attachments you have that you don't even realize you have, but then when it's being shown to you in such a, a brutal way, it, um, it can rock your world a little bit, but. Oh yeah. I, I had, um. I had a family member, well, an in-law, not in my husband's side, my, my sister, one of my sister's in-laws trolled my uh, email for the great, the amazing grace group that I, I run mm -hmm. um, pretending to, uh, he was under a uh, email address that is weird um, and uh, was trolling it and asking me all sorts of questions. However, he didn't realize that his name actually showed up in the email. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, are you kidding? And, and it really rocked me a little bit because I'm like, it, it, you know, I've lost my whole family this year and, um, that's not easy. Now, granted, I know why I'm pretty well aware of why I'm, I'm learning to accept it. And, um, but still it kind of, I think maybe it was the last branch on the tree that needed to be shaped a little bit to, uh, get rid of the, the little bit of residual damage if that makes any sense absolutely it does i know Catherine and i talked about this this morning too now stephanie and i are lucky we live in the same country and i have talked about driving up and like doing some stuff up there after the holidays but you know the hard thing about what's going on right now is that we all have lost people in our our like daily lives in wherever we're living in the world um and we're meet, meeting all these people online um and becoming really good friends with people online but we're so separated because we can't cross borders we can't you know there's so much going on and it's kind of frustrating because human beings need human beings like you know to be in a, a place where you can't <clears throat> hug a friend you can't you mm -hmm. know sit down at a table and share a drink with your friend like without there being a zoom without there being technology involved where it can just be two human beings having a heart to heart we can't do that right now and um and i know that that is so important to uh to us as humans we need each other we're connected and um and that's been really hard i think we're at the end of this like really long road and the battle is 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 we know it's been heating up and we know that stuff's happening we know it's happening but um oh excuse me hold on one second my computer is to deciding to install something while i'm talking to you not today, Satan, not today. Um, so, um, so we're, we're kind of in this weird kind of place. And, you know, I know we don't talk too, too openly about stuff we're all going through privately. We're just generally speaking, but Stephanie, I both have gone through a lot privately. That's very, um, that's kind of rocked us to our core a little bit. And, but we can't really do anything because we're stuck. We're, you know, it's like, you're kind of, you're forced to kind of deal with it. You can't really go anywhere. You can't, you know, there's so much going on, but, um, so if anybody right now is struggling, I think it's very astrological. I was telling Catherine, I think that yeah, astrologically the veil is just really thinning. And on top of that, we're being met. That's like a collision course with our own expectations and our own thoughts on things. And so we're having to kind of, um, reorganize and and re and find new stability if that makes sense so mm -hmm. but stephanie 
sent me a care package. It was so awesome. And um, some of the stuff I'm going to show you guys tomorrow, because we're doing a round table tomorrow as well. But I have to show you guys, she sent me some Christmas ornaments and they're fantastic. So I'm going to show you guys some of these Christmas ornaments that she sent me. This is supposed to be a gift to make y'all laugh. <laughs> I love it. Which is for Christ. Y'all can see that. See my ring light. Um, if y'all don't know what that means, a couple of weeks ago, Stephanie and I were talking about being called witches. And we were talking about like all this like aggressive stuff that's happened. Like I got the shit scared out of me because of it, because somebody was like literally threatening me um, and calling me a witch. And because I was challenging, I was challenging the Bible and I'm challenging what we've been, what we've been taught. I've never challenged God. I've never, I've just challenged the narrative. I've and gotten closer to God. Yeah. I've gotten closer to God. And so I said, like on that show, I was like, we should make teacher t-shirts to just say witches for Christ. And so Stephanie took that and ran with it. And I love it. Um, we have, let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. We have, this is great. We have to show this to Janine. The spa, that bunch, dastardly plans, the cure, white hat card. Oh, the white hat card, Mr. T. Mr. T uh, and the white hat card. Oh, there I see it. Okay, yes. That I just love I, it. I could have made about 10 Christmas ornaments with all of Janine's sayings on it. <laughs> I freaking love it. Like, I freaking love it. Like, years from now. And I made hers like a purpley color because I don't know what it is. Purple in her just, I don't know, go together really well. Yep. We have fuck Constantine. <laughs> I mean, his black for an obvious reason. <laughs> and y'all know why. Like, I'm like, that was the biggest, like, groundbreaking thing for me in my research. Because we've been taught that Constantine's a saint when literally the dude was a fucking Satanist. Like, literally. I mean, it's there. It's all in the research. It's it's there. So, um, and he started our churches. He's the reason why we have churches. So we have hashtag FBLG, which means fuck Bishop. And I won't say the rest of the name. Y'all know what we're talking about. Y'all know the issues that have been going on. Um, we have, this is one of my favorite ones too. All I want for Christmas is the EBS, is my EBS. <laughs> <laughs> all I want for Christmas is the EBS. Christmas is my EBS. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Welcome to the shit show. I love it. I love it. Welcome to the shit show. Um... We are all just walking each other home. You guys know I say that all the time. That was one of Ram Dass's quotes. And it's true. We're, we're all just walking each other home. That's, I just love that. First time I ever heard that quote, it like made me emotional. I was like, he's right. We're all just walking each other home. <laughs> we have hashtag FGB or FJB. Excuse me. We know, know what that all that means. Y'all know what that means. Um, oh, I have that. And then of course, Esoteric Atlanta, my channel. This is awesome, Stephanie. And she sent me more stuff too, which I'll show you guys tomorrow. Actually, I can show your bracelet. Yeah, I'm gonna show the bracelet. Let me put all these up. So get them out of the way here. Um, she sent me a beautiful bracelet. As you guys know, Stephanie has her awesome Etsy shop. I'm gonna put the link down in the description box below. If you're looking for uh, Christmas presents for anybody, we, we want to support other people, not necessarily corporations, because that's how we got in this mess to begin with. Look at this beautiful bracelet, guys. Look at this. It's got the tree of life on it. It's beautiful. Y'all see all that? And uh, thank you to Wanda who sent me more beads. Oh, awesome. Yep, I got a big. So Kristen sent me a big package a couple of weeks ago. And then Wanda, um, I don't say last names, but Wanda I like to give credit to. Um, you know, sent me, she used to make her own jewelry and, uh, doesn't anymore and, um, sent a lot of stuff to me. So I've made a ton awesome. of bracelets already using the stuff. I just have to post them onto my Etsy. So thank you, Wanda. And, uh, just great. Yeah. It just, it, you know, I'm finding out like how many people are just super, super generous. I'm not talking about just donating money. It, it, it's it's more than that. You know, donating, donating beads, donating their time to watch our channel. Mm -hmm. That too, um, <clears throat> which helps us. Um, any kind of donation, whether it's watching a channel or donating to a cause or and thanks to everyone who has donated to my groups or my um, GoFundMe. Um, I'm already 
Well, can we talk about that? I was going to bring up that GoFundMe because we haven't really had a chance to talk about it. I put a little notice on the video we did with Janine on Saturday, but um, Stephanie, as you guys know, she has taken it upon herself to do this. She's doing the Lord's work. She created this um, support groups for people who are coming out of religious A-B-U-S-E, which unfortunately is way more common than it should be. And you don't have to be of the Christian persuasion. You can be coming from any type of big religious uh, organization where you've been basically traumatized and mistreated. And I've sat in a couple of these groups and they're, they're pretty, they're amazing people that are coming into these groups. It's all private. Nobody, we're not recording anything. You're safe. Um, but you have a, a women's group, a men's group, and then a deprogramming group. And, and the thing about it is, is Stephanie, like a lot of us, I mean, I just had to have this realization as well, because I can't get into my shala in India without two. So a lot of us, um, our jobs that we did before this are now on rocky grounds because of our, because of us saying no, basically. I came out of the medical field. So yeah. you know where that goes. So Stephanie has started her channel. She started these groups and a lot of people are involved and she doesn't have a laptop. She's really like working off of her cell phone. Occasionally she, or I use my husband's laptop. However, um, his laptop, I cannot do certain things with, like, I can't make my videos look professional or anything like that. Um, and it's not, and I'm not trying to make my husband look bad or anything. It's just, he uses this laptop and he needs certain amount of space on it. So it's like, I can't download, um, software you know certain software yeah and plus it's not mine and it was a gift from his um mom and his stepdad and i don't i don't want to do anything to his property i know we're married i know what people are going to say to that my husband is very anal retentive (laughs) he's he's type o blood (laughs) so um he he which (laughs) I'm sure you, you kind of like that too, Bryce, right? You mm-hmm. said the O's are like that. So it's, it, you know, I, how do I put this? I'm not trying to make him look bad. I respect his property, in other words. And he has to use his laptop for certain um, things. And so I just need something to call my own where I can do what I need to do on it. And being able to download programs like um, a, a video program, but also, too, if I have to run groups and he needs his laptop or something, then I um, can't do that on the cell phone. out of luck. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and given the fact that I have, you know, what took me out of work was an illness. And then um, now I can't go back to it because of, uh, you know, the the things going, yeah. you know. So it's and, and I do odds and end jobs. You know, I, you know, I work part time, but it's not guaranteed pay. I take care of an elderly gentleman and it's not like he ended up in the hospital. So I can't take care of him this week. So it's, it's very like, um, you're not on stable ground. It's not, it, yeah, it's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. So I, you know, I still need to help out with the bills and stuff like that. And, um, so any of the proceeds that go th- to this, are so appreciated and and this is for her to get again you guys for her to get a laptop and she can get some <clears> programming <throat> so that she can run these groups better the gofundme link it will be down in the description box below and i want to i want to bring up something while you're saying this too like this is kind of the reality of the situation i've seen a lot of people speak about like those of us who have platforms being paid off i'm not paid off are you paid off stephanie no no the no, only i'm not i'm not looking to get rich. I don't want to be rich. I don't worship money. Mm -mm. I just need to live. I need to put food on the table for my kid. And the thing is is too, is my husband is completely asleep. So it's not like he's understanding the work I'm doing. He's not getting it, you know? So it's not anything that he's like, Oh, you're working really hard to do this and this and this. And, um, no, it's not like that at all. If I were to tell people what's going on in my personal life right now, they would completely, which I won't because I can't. It's just something, nothing horrible, but you you know what I'm, you know, Bryce knows what I'm going through right now. And it's a little on the complicated side. So yeah. um, anytime I actually get a donation, even if it's for $5, you can ask Bryce. I literally will cry in tears of happiness because I appreciate that generosity. Yeah. And again, guys, like I, I will say it, I mean, for, and 
it's funny, Catherine and I were talking about this before we started filming this morning. Um, I, running these channels, it's, it's a full-time job. I mean, it's, it's definitely, um, and it's something I love to do. I like, I love to research. I like geeking out over that stuff, but it's a lot, isn't it? You have to research for days, um, all day just to put together a 20 minute video. Um, and, and then of course, sharing information on other channels and scheduling with people, it's a full-time job. And so for a lot of people who run these channels, there's just no way, like we wouldn't be able to run the channel without some sort of payment because we still have to pay our bills. We still have to eat. We still have to have a roof over our head. So like the only money that I make off of doing you esoteric Atlanta is the AdSense. Um, I'm very grateful that YouTube does do AdSense where they do put commercials on our videos because that enables me to be able to focus more of my time on the channel. And also I have my awesome patrons, which are amazing. Uh, but Stephanie is at the point where she's got enough subscribers for AdSense, but she has to have hours watched. So at this moment, Stephanie, you're not pulling really in any money from your work on your channel, are you? Nothing. Not, not my channel, just the donations I get from my groups is pretty much it. And yeah. then I've had a couple of people just donate, just to donate. Yeah. Um, and so I just wanted yeah. to like specify that with people because I have seen that on Twitter. Um, in fact, somebody commented on a, a video that I had done um, with a bunch of people around table and that we were all just being paid off. And it's like, no, I'm, I'm filming from my bedroom. I mean, Stephanie's seen my whole room. Like I'm up against the wall in my bedroom on a Mac, on an old MacBook right now. Um, I'm not in a studio. I'm in my bedroom. Um, th there's no, we're just human beings, just like everybody else is. Um, I, I know that this is crazy, crazy, crazy times. I, been going through old pictures. I'll touch on this for a second. I've been going through old pictures because I'm bringing on my, um, my best friend's going to come on in a couple of weeks and do a show with me. So I was really trying to find all of our pictures. We old pictures we had together. And I've found some like really funny pictures. Like one was a monkey that stole my Fanta in India. And I posted it, the story of that. Was that was funny. I and laughed. I, like I found an old picture from an old Christmas picture of my cousin, like falling off the sofa back in like the eighties. And then I posted one uh, back from like, I actually remember this when I took this picture. It was back in like 2015-ish. I was in London. I was actually in, in England for a yoga thing. And uh, a couple of my friends and I decided we had it like a day off of like conferences and stuff to go to Stonehenge. And I used to live in, in England. So I'm very familiar with England. And I, I was like, cool, let's go. Let's go to Stonehenge. And we were doing the whole experience. This was before the Great Awakening. And it, this was right when um, selfies were a thing. And I had gotten a selfie stick because my a couple of my friends and I, after we were going to do this thing in England, we were going to go to Italy. We then went to a girl's trip on Italy. And you know, we wanted to be able to take use the selfie stick to be able to hold the camera up, the phone up to get more of the city, right? It was to be able to take pictures of more of where we were. And so I didn't know at that point that you could flip your camera around so you could see yourself, you know, <laughs> is that what that, that, that picture was that you, that was what that picture day. was. So I had it on the selfie stick and I was by Stonehenge and I was like trying desperately to like take a picture by Stonehenge and it only, I'll probably put the picture in. It only caught like half of my face and like some of the rock, but my eyes, it was windy. My eyes were squinted. Well, I was like, and I remember when we got back on the bus to go back to the parking lot, like, cause they take you and I was going through my pictures and I remember looking at my friends and being like, this is why I suck at taking pictures. <laughs> and like the whole bus, I like, held my phone up and the whole bus started laughing. So I, put, I shared that picture and everyone's like, oh my God, you're part of the, because it was one eye. Oh, but come really, on. I was like stuck. Oh, shut. come on. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, no, this is a failed attempt at me trying to take a picture of myself at Stonehenge. Can you I know? just stop you there for two seconds? Because I, I need to say, I just need to say this. Okay. We're taking back all of the symbols as good. First of all. Yeah. Okay. Number two. I, I Honestly, I'm, I'm like a loss for words with that because that is ridiculous. I mean, you've seen the picture. I know That's I'm going to post it. Ridiculous. It literally looks like I fucked up taking a selfie, doesn't it? It's so obvious that you 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 effed up taking a selfie. <laughs> I mean, come on. Okay, it, whoever is is commenting like that obviously needs to work on themselves a little bit. Yep, go work on yourself. I blocked a few people to be honest with you with those comments. I just went yeah, them yeah. I was like, this is this is abusive. 
I'll let that one slide, but that, I won't say that word again. Cause that's a, I was like, this is not, this was supposed to be funny. Like I'm going through old pictures and I'm re being reminded of these things that stupid stuff that I did. And there's actual photographic evidence that I did this. I, and, and then people are like, Oh, you know, they have to tell you that they're, I'm like, I am not a part of this club at all. Like at all. No. I'm not a part of this club. That was literally me trying to take a picture of myself. Who hasn't tried to take a picture of themselves at some historical landmark before? I'm sorry for people who think that was some symbolism. Have you ever traveled places and taken pictures by like the Eiffel Tower or the Coliseum or Stonehenge? Like that's what that was. Although I did, I did a very poor job at, at maneuvering because it was 2015. It was what almost seven years ago, like very different now. So anyway, but yeah. It's yeah. So that's, that's absolutely mind boggling, ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I talk with my hands a lot. So people will com constantly comment and be like, oh, you're throwing down hand symbolism. No, I'm not. I talk with my hands. I'm Southern. Okay. Time for the human race to grow up a little bit. Let's go, people. Grow up. You want to know what Southern women are like? Watch Still Magnolias. We talk with yeah. our hands. Um, and I'm also Italian. I talk with my hands all the time. And I also like when I, in my, in my job outside of YouTube, I don't teach daily maestro classes anymore, but I do teach courses and I, I use my body and I use to, to, to demo and to show things. So I'm used to being animated when I, when I speak, because that's how I teach. Um, and so, no, I'm not throwing down hand symbols. It's not happening. Uh, none of that's happening. If I was a part of this bunch, this group, I would not be filming from my bedroom. They're probably trolls that are in the group, number yeah. one. And number two, there there are people that I've noticed gone to such an extreme that they have to find the, the demonic symbolism in every little last ounce of life. Yep. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so if I post a, uh, a picture of my dog's head and one eye is not showing is my dog part of it. Oh, that was blamed, too, because I showed a picture I had of Ravi and me that I found laying on the floor of our shala. And it like cut off. It was both of my eyes, but it like cut off my mouth. And like he was kind I of happy. And I'm like, there people. I'm like, no, like literally. Okay, my dog. I think my dog is the most handsome boy in the whole wide world. <laughs> love my life. But if he knows you're taking a picture of him, he will walk away. And so I yeah. remember that I was like laying by the floor, and I was like, I'm just gonna because he looks so handsome. I want to take a picture of him. You know, not everything is nefarious. Some most yeah. things are innocent. Um, and, and this whole like idea of like truthers being paid off, that's not true. It's not true. And not yeah. for me anyway, not for anybody that I film with anyway, because all the people that I film with regularly, I know them pretty well now. And I'm telling you, they're not being paid off. Okay. Yeah. So that none of us that, are rich. Mm -mm, that needs to stop that. That is, that needs to stop. That's derogatory. It's cruel. Um, and it needs to stop. So um, and another thing too, like, um, we don't know when anything is going to happen. Like we're not aware of any dates or anything. So we are just writing this, this flow with you guys. And, um, God, that's Stephanie. why we donate our time to cut. It's, it's, it's good to get, we do these like little deep dives too, to get our mind off of kind of that, the anticipation. The yeah. It's, it's, it's a nice little distraction. In the same time as we're, we're still pouring out truth too. Yeah. Does that make well, sense? Yeah. And that's kind of what I kind of come at the angle with on my channel. It's like, I don't know when anything's going to, I don't know when things are going to happen. I don't know, but I like to research and I'm kind of a weirdo. So I don't mind researching strange stories and putting them together to see where we misinterpreted history or where maybe we should have been more aware of what was actually going on. That's kind of like what you're doing. Like let's deep dive into stuff while we're waiting for the military to do what mm -hmm. they've got to do. Why don't we educate ourselves so that mm -hmm. this doesn't happen again so that we don't ever find ourselves. So our descendants don't ever find themselves in this situation. Let's figure out where we went wrong. And that's kind of where I'm coming from in my channel is to just go back. I had no intention when I started this journey, I had absolutely no intention of ever reading the missing books of the Bible. No intention. Um, it was all about studying and exploring these different topics. And when I started this channel, it was mostly going to be based in the state of Georgia because that's where I'm from. If you look at my earlier videos, it's all based in Atlanta and in Georgia. It wasn't until I actually started having realizations about other things that I moved outside of the state of Georgia. And um, I believe in the same books of the Bible thing was a God thing. 
because mm-hmm. I was doing a show with David Zublik and it just hit me one day. And I was like, David, let's read through them. Let's, let's see what they say. What do they say? Like, I know they're there. I'm curious. What do these books say? And then boom, all this stuff has taken off from then. And, and I'm very fortunate. I feel very lucky and blessed that God put that in my path um, because it has strength in my relationship, which then brought me to Constantine. Well, why did this happen? Why were these books? And it's unraveled everything. And then we've got mm-hmm. Stephanie here who is also like, knows the Bible. And she's doing these incredible deep dives into some of these uh, biblical characters that might not be who we think they are. You know, so all of this is just, it's just us helping the matrix to crumble. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. There's nothing nefarious about what any of us are doing. We're all just doing our best to try to walk each other home again, as Ram Ram Dawes says, so that we can figure this out together. And I, you know, it's so, and the the positive thing, the great thing is, is like 99.9% of the people that watch our channel are awesome and understand that are not so much. It's just those few people that want to, you know, it's like when you point at one person, you got three pink fingers pointing back at you. For those people that criticize that photo, calling me part of the bunch because one of my eyes was in the photo. Let's go through, look, look through some of your photos that you have from the past. Do you have any photos from the past where one of your eye just happens to be seen? Are you in the club? Or was that just a mistake? Mm. <clears throat> so, yeah, all right. we need to start using our noggins. Use some critical thinking skills. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, Stephanie, where do you want to go from here? You want to talk about the dream or the books first? I can. Well, we're talking about the. We're talking about that. So we can go into the dream first, and then I'll okay. go into what our deep dive is about today. So this was not supposed to be part of today's video, but I wanted to share this because this was brought to my attention this morning. So my son is about. He's almost fifteen years old. Um, he is finding his spirituality and including he actually is interested in reading tarot. Um, So that that's exciting. Um, And uh, earlier this year, I had uh, detoxed him from heavy metals where, cause he, he had uh, autism was diagnosed with autism, a behavioral type of autism where his behavior would get out of control. And of course all fingers pointed at it was my fault. It was my fault. It's not my fault. Well, now it's my fault that he's healed. <laughs> so um, if we're going on a feisty note here, right? Uh, so anyways, he's had a lot of dreams. However, this morning he woke up and gave me a, or told me a dream that really, really hit me. So um, and I actually had to do some research into the symbology behind some of his dream because I knew it meant something. And uh, and Bryce, I told you this dream already. And uh Interesting, huh? (laughs) So his dream started off where he was chopping down a bunch of trees. So um, as he was telling me about that part of the the story of his dream, I I looked into it and I went on DuckDuckGo and I researched a little bit of what that means. Now, in ancient times, if you had a dream about chopping down trees um, and he said he he was chopping them down with with an axe, like an old fashioned axe. So I figure maybe ancient ties to it. Um, but in other words, in ancient times, if you had a dream about chopping down trees, it meant the crumbling or ending of a kingdom, which we know is happening now. So um, anyways, he says in the dream, he gets on a bus um, and he was looking in the front window of the bus, even though he wasn't the driver, but still looking out the front window and this big giant satellite fell out of the sky. And, so, and then all of a sudden, all these other satellites started falling out of the sky. I related that to uh, probably EBS and the coming down uh, or the tearing down of the media. So then he said he got home in the dream and my husband had gotten home um, pre- previously from work. And he had experienced one of the satellites as well falling out of the sky. And he got he found three crystals um, in the satellite. And the crystals, there was two clear quartz crystals and one amethyst. And when you put them together, it made a triangle. And so, um, Bryce, what did you tell? Because I I didn't get into looking about the triangle thing. But if the triangle is a good thing, what did you tell me that means? So a lot of people believe that pyramids and triangles are bad because the bad people use it. But what we have to remember (laughs) is that the darkness can't create anything. It can only steal from the light and invert it. So a lot of people look at like pyramids. Like I have this healing that I sleep beside 
um, according to a lot of spiritual text, long, long time ago, we were shown through like the pyramids of Egypt, how to use this shape to enhance our own spiritual enlightenment, to find God through coming, you know, rising up. But they, this group have, this bunch have taken this and made it bad, but it's not, itself is not bad. That's why we're going to be rebirthing these things that were once ours. And so that could have been a sign of um, humanity's awakening, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I looked up even what clear quartz meaning is. And one of the, I hadn't gotten around to uh, the amethyst. I, I'm actually probably going to make a video on this stream because it's so interesting. Um, but one of the things about clear quartz was awakening. And what it means or uh angels angel guidance so from what i took in this dream um considering we just had the solar eclipse last saturday and uh with that video of janine and now that we know what that means um or i got confirmed of what it means i think it's safe to say that you know we're all getting signs that you know shit's about to hit the van I mean, Janine had a quite an interesting morning yesterday, and I'm sure many of your followers have watched uh, her. She, she mentions it with Catherine Edwards on her video and also with Jean-Claude on, uh, on their live from last night, too. So she talks about it. So very interesting. If people haven't seen that yet, to go watch it. She says it in the beginning of both shows. Um, and then I think even Jean-Claude said he had, he had heard alarms also going on um, yesterday morning. So a lot of a lot of weird stuff is happening. A lot of us are getting, I think, uh, hints from the spirit realm to uh, buckle up and get ready. So I'm excited. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. Let's 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 uh, get her done. <laughs> let's go, baby. Let's do it. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get all southern there. <laughs> Bless your heart. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's boring up here in the northeast we don't say things like y'all y'all that's like the one southern thing i'm gonna hold on to for the rest of y'all 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 i love it oh y'all well y'all there's y'all and there's all y'all all y'all all y'all so all i'm y'all i'm doing a video i'm doing multiple round tables tomorrow with stephanie with all y'all it's a bunch of people all y'alls all y'all yeah so <laughs> yes, I like being from the South. This being from the South is fun. It's a lot of folklore, a lot of uh, different ac different accents all over the South. But uh, well, we're finding out that the Northeast is pretty much a big portal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At this point, nothing shocks me anymore. It just it nothing just, shocks it, me either. It's kind of like okay, unicorn unicorns and dragons and six. Oh, great. Okay, can't wait to see them. Perfect. <laughs> Where are they? Let's see them. I want one. Where the little fairies? <laughs> little pixie dust. <laughs> what are we standing on <laughs> yeah that All will right. be fascinating to find out so i get to the book series the left behind oh my god so i'm so glad we're doing this because me it too. really led me to a rabbit hole I, I i didn't even have time to write everything down um because i want i had to make this more condensed so i'm gonna so there was two people who wrote this series that was tim lahay and jerry jenkins and i'm gonna start wa off with tim lahay he's more the, of the obvious in uh being a part of a club if you want to say that and then we're gonna head over to jerry jenkins because something interesting came up when i did some research on that so just to go into a little bit of history on mr lahay um, he was born on April 27th, 1926, and he died on July 25th, 2016. Um, he was a minister, a speaker, and an author. Author, can't talk today. Um, he was a Bachelor of Arts from Bob James University in Greenville, South Carolina, and a, had a doctorate in ministry from the Western Seminary and a doctorate of literature from Liberty University. He was in the Army at age 18, and he was uh, a machine um, pow powist. I can't say the uh, word. Um, and then he was a pastor in Pumpkin Town, South Carolina. That sounds like a fun town. 
preacher in Minneapolis until 1956, then went to San Diego, California, and was a preacher at the Scott Memorial Baptist Church, then founded the Institute of Creation Research at Christian Heritage College in El Cajon, sorry if I mispronounced that, California. And this was like studies in creation and teaching about creation, which we know what happened to that. Um, he also campaigned for the presidency of uh, George W. Bush. That's where I'm like, okay. In 2001, he wrote the Left Behind series and hosted a TV program, The King is Coming. In 1947, married Beverly Ratcliffe. And I think her family is a club family, the Ratcliffs. Sound familiar? I didn't get a chance to look too much into her. Let they us know in the comment section below if y'all know of that family. I'm yeah. Here. Uh, four children, nine grandchildren, and resided in Los Angeles, California. We know what happens in L.A. And at 90, he died of a stroke. And that's just a little bit of history on him. However, his net worth was $20 million. And um, I don't know if you can share a screen. Um, actually, I sent you some images, so you might not need to share a screen. You could probably just put this up as you're doing the editing. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> there is evidence, a lot of evidence, uh, that uh, Mr. LaHaye is a Freemason. Yeah. Um, so if you go to his book, The Prophecy Study Bible, there is several Masonic symbols on the cover of it together. There is the star. There is what the alpha and the omega, but when you put them together, it is the uh, Freemason symbol, the triangle thing, you know, the ruler. So that was um, what I found on him. Now we're going to go to Jerry Jenkins. And I'm, I didn't go into too much of his back history because Something struck me very odd about this man. He looked very familiar to me, like he was the father of somebody that I'm familiar with. Um, but to go into his early history, so he was born on 9-23-49. He began his career as a sports writer. He worked with a lot of the uh, sports superstars, but later started to work with Mr. Billy Graham. We know Billy Graham is a Mason. Um, and one of his quotes that struck me odd was, I don't see success as a goal. I see obedience as a goal. Yeah. His net worth is $3 million. Now, this is where it gets a little weird. His son is Dallas Jenkins. Are you familiar with Dallas Jenkins, Bryce? No. Are, you from, are you familiar with the uh, series called The Chosen? That does sound familiar. So The Chosen is a series. You could probably maybe even look it up um, if you go to share this uh, on the screen. So the series The Chosen is about Jesus's life and ministry, how he gets all of his disciples, rounds them all up, and lives as a nomad going from town to town preaching the good news of the gospel. This was my favorite TV series. For the last couple of years, it started off in uh, 2019 was the first. Uh, yeah, there you go. <coughs> yep. So this was an ex it's an excellent that series. Is, so his, he, who, his son was how how was he involved in this? He put it together or he started it. Yeah. Or? Dallas Jenkins is the writer and director of this okay. series. OK. Um, so because I, I I'm like. This Jerry Jenkins looks super, super familiar. He, he looks like I know him from somewhere else. And I said, wait a second, Jenkins. He looks just like Dallas Jenkins. So um, I'm seeing if you have a picture here of Dallas Jenkins. Let's see here. There you go. There he goes. Yep. So. Apparently, Dallas Jenkins could not get this series uh, probably uh, produced by Hollywood, right? Um, so it's become a series where you pay it forward, apparently. Um, and so 
I found it very odd. I stopped watching The Chosen back about, I would say, July, because what happened was there was this huge thing where Dallas Jenkins and Jonathan Romy, who plays Jesus, went to go visit the Pope at the Vatican a couple months ago. Now, how is that so when we know what happened to Pope Francis? Right. That's what I want to know. What what on earth is going on there? So, yeah, this guy who plays Jesus. We got right John, here. Yep. Yep, that's, yep, there you go. That's Jonathan Romy. They both went to go visit the Pope. And so I was very, like, taken back by that. I, I was questioning that. I didn't look into it. I was actually, to be no, honest with you. And they're in that room, that room that looks like a lizard. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You mm -hmm. see that eye there? I've done, I've talked about this. You know what I'm talking about, right? I know what you're talking about, yep. Yeah, so I, I almost feel like God led us to do this particular series for a deep dive. Because this guy is still filming this. He's going on to the third season. That room. What does that look like to you? Oh, that's a snake. That's a snake head. And they have in that um, where the Pope sits, it's like horrific. The uh, This thing. Yep. Look at that. In addition to everything, Bryce, uh, the second season was all filmed in Utah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It was um it was filmed in a uh Goshen, Utah, I believe, where they have a complete replica of the old Jerusalem. Wow. So we know what happens in not not I'm not saying anybody from Utah is part of a cult or anything. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that Utah is a huge uh, area for, um, what is it, uh, Mormonism, mm -hmm. Mor Mor the Mormons, right? Where they, mm -hmm. the polygamy and all that kind of stuff. <coughs> yeah, so, you know, his father worked with Billy Graham and worked with this Tim LaHaye. Billy Graham and Tim LaHaye are both Freemasons. And we have this guy, right? there's Billy Graham. He's a scary looking dude. I never liked Billy, ever. Is that the, what's that? What's that hand symbolism? Can um, I can't go sc scroll down a little bit because um, our, there we go. Yep. Up there. What's that? What kind of symbolism is that? The devil horns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, this, you know, J uh, Jerry Jenkins uh, was um, in cahoots with two Freemasons. And uh, his net worth, like I said, it was, uh, what, $3 million? No Christian that serves Christ should be like not saying that if you earn the money in, in a, in a fashion where you are completely honest, that's, that's one thing. Like I think um, our friend, Mr. T there mm -hmm. on, on, honestly earned his living. Yeah, I do too. But do, but doing a ministry. And the thing is, if this guy has $3 million doing this chosen series, and uh, is, is getting all these donations from all, I mean, hit, the Chosen is hit all over the world. He's getting donations um, from, from every part of the world to pay it forward so that others can watch the uh, series. You know, where's that? That, that, makes me, that makes me question. Yeah. Where's that money going? That's a lot so, of money to be taking in. I didn't. I didn't honestly think I was going to be talking about the Chosen series on this video, but when I started to research into Jerry Jenkins, it's like God led me to that because this was my favorite series. I, I would binge watch it. And uh, something had me stop watching it a few months ago, and it was after, like I said, I found that uh, Dallas and Jonathan Romy went out to visit the Pope. I mean, how is that so if he's gone? We see CGI all the time on him, yes, but we know 
you know, they took him out, what, July of 2020? Yeah, I have no idea, but I know he's gone. Yeah. So it's either somebody's playing a character and these these people are completely oblivious to it, which I highly doubt, especially if one has direct ties to Freemasonry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <coughs> so these are, yeah. These, are, these are club families. They're laughing at us all the mm -hmm. way. Yeah. Well, guess no, what? We're, we're, we're not figuring it out. Them. Yeah. And what, so, what, for people who missed that episode, we decided to do this. What made it, do you remember what motivated us to look into the Left Behind series? I think we started talking about it on a video two weeks ago. Because it's frightening, right? It's, it's, yeah, terrifying. It, it's, uh, it's, it's fear porn, it's propaganda, it's, um, it keeps you in that fear based foundation of, of uh, organized religion. It's like, mm -hmm. That's that's the tactic that was used on me the entire time I was part of the church <coughs> was, are you going to get left behind? Because if you're living in sin, you're going to get left behind. Well, identify what the hell living in sin is, number one, because from what we're told, we, we always sin every single day. Yeah. Listen, I dropped F-bombs like it's going out of style. So, I mean, I, apparently I'm getting left behind. <laughs> I mean, I'm not married. I've lived in sin. Yeah, I'll probably continue to live in sin. <laughs> That's my I personal mean, business. And and I, if you if you really start even looking into it, to I mean, it's it's really ridiculous. I mean, I saw that one scene from the Left Behind series where suddenly the rapture happens and planes are crashing everywhere and everybody's pants are coming out of the sky. Like seriously. Yeah. No, that's not. I mean. Yeah, and it's interesting. Um, the original definition of the word sin meant just to miss the mark. To not understand yeah. who you really are. Yeah. Yeah, this it, it's it's a this is something that keeps people obedient and in control of the, scared. of the top players. Yeah. They're scared. Yeah. And and what needs to change is uh us being driven by fear. We need to be driven by our intuition. And the thing is, like, I know I get a lot of fundamentalists that will comment on my thing about how, like, I'm horrible. I'm a false prophet because I'm not married. I've lived in oh sin. God. All this kind of bullshit. And it's like, you do understand that the marriage license you have is owned by this bunch. That the ritual, I mean, we didn't know that before now, but that the ritual of marriage that is performed now at the church or in a courthouse is part of this bunch. I don't think God cares if you have a piece of fucking paper. It's about, it's about a um, commitment that you have to the other person and treating yeah. that other person and the, in the gospel of the Holy 12. What did Jesus say about divorce? He said, eh, if two people don't love each other anymore, get divorced. That's what he says in the gospel of the Holy 12. I'll say this. <clears throat> the God I serve doesn't want someone miserable during their life he wants us to thrive he wants us to be happy he and i'm not saying going you know bang everybody behave you know i'm not saying that i'm not saying go wild because that doesn't really bring happiness in, in all reality but um the god i serve wants us to thrive and be happy and to be prosperous and to First of all, God wants us to have lots of kids. He wants us to have families and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Um, but he doesn't want us being absolutely uh, pushed down by misery because we um, have a, a, a flipping certificate of marriage. Yeah. And we evolve and change. There, there are people who had very successful marriages early on in their life, and then they've evolved and changed. <laughs> And there's other marriages, you know, it, it's, it's our, our whole idea around this idea. Well, I think, I think a lot of this too is the reemergence again of the divine feminine, mm -hmm. you know, for a lot of the age of Pisces, the age we're leaving, women were nothing more than cattle. You know, they were nothing more than property owned by men. And, um, and a lot of most of our historical time, there has been arranged marriages, even in a higher upper, especially in upper caste class societies where you have fathers making deals with other families where the woman would come with a dowry and the woman would not have access to her dowry until she was married to her husband. And it would go in her husband's name. 
So it was literally like women were being forced into these situations with men that they weren't in love with, you know, and it's, we brought us, it's brought us to this place in our lives. And I, I respect people who have been with the same person for their whole adult life. Like, that's really cool. I'm, my grandparents were like that, like awesome for you. But sometimes that's just not the reality. And depending on what your soul's purpose is, you're going to have different people you connect with at different points of your life that are going to, you know, you know, it's, 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 um, at the end of the day, I guess what I'm getting at is no one should feel guilty about anything like that. You know, they, nothing like that, especially if, if it, if the organization that's telling you what you're doing is bad is an organization that's involved in horrific things. Also to think about it, somebody who's married to somebody who beats them or mistreats them emotionally and mentally. And Bryce and I have both been in those kind of relationships before, but I can't imagine if I was actually married to that person, you have to go through court. They make it in the satanic world we're in, they make it nearly impossible to, to leave somebody in safety when you're in a situation like that. <clears throat> and so God doesn't want us to get beaten up by our significant other. I mean, and if that were the case, that's not, that's not the same God. No, no. No, it's not. You know, the God so, that created me and you, Stephanie, as women, <coughs> he put just as much thought and love into cre the creation of women as he does in the creation of men. There's a divine masculine and there's a divine feminine, and they're equal. Jesus Christ had a very, very, very special place in his heart for women, too. He knew what we went through. Yeah. Maybe that's why he came back as a girl. <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, go watch our last video with Janine from Saturday. <laughs> Yeah. Well, did somebody say what if, or was it you that said, what if Janine's Jesus though? <laughs> oh, that was, that was a comment. I laughed so hard at that. And I'm like, hmm. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that what be a perfect something? person to, to bring back the divine feminine? I mean, she really is. I'm not saying she is, but. Oh, she's, she embodies the divine feminine 100%. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Um, the, the comments we got from that video were, they, they brought me to tears. Mm-hmm. On both of our channels. Yep. Because I was actually finally able to post a video on my channel. What do you do? I can't believe it. The moment it happened, I'm like, wait a second. I just accomplished something that I've been super technologically impaired with. Round of applause for stuff. I'm, I'm so, I'm bad at technology too. Like I, Catherine said something today about trying to learn Twitter and I'll show. I was like, girl, me too. I've had a Twitter account for a while now and I'm trying to be better about using Twitter um, in the yoga world, Twitter is not really that big. It's more Instagram for the yoga world because of the visuals. Um, mm -hmm. so I just never really messed with Twitter and I still can't figure it out. Like I'm trying to figure out, I don't know how to do threads. Like what's a thread? Like I have no idea. How to do it, so. <laughs> I don't even have a Twitter account. If that makes you feel any better. <laughs> and don't, I even start me, don't even start on like Snapchat. I have no clue what that I is. I have no so. clue either. I, um, I deactivated my Facebook recently because I'm just, I'm, I'm done with that world. I'm just, yeah. I think a lot of these platforms are going to come down anyway. Oh yeah. I'll, uh, yeah. I'll join Mr. T's platform that that I'll join. Yeah. 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 And I like, you know, on my, my social media accounts, um, and I did this with my yoga as well. It's not every post I make. Isn't just about the topic that I'm focused on, like yoga or the great awakening. I'll post, I'll post other stuff too, because that's the complexity, complexity of life of who we are as human beings. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's nice to kind of laugh and take a little bit of a break, but um, yeah, Twitter's confusing to me. I don't really, I don't, I'm, I'm still <clears> like, <throat> what is happening? Like trying to like scroll through. I'm like, I, don't I was know. on um at the beginning of my awakening journey. I was on MeWe and I could not figure that one out to save my life. Either. That is don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's okay. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like the patriotic, facebook in a way there's different like groups though that you can it's okay it's almost like another maybe telegram but it, it's it's set up differently see i think telegram is super easy to use i forget i have telegram and i'm a part of the sacred blue tent and i forget that i have and i i got <laughs> all these messages from people on telegram and i didn't even realize that until the other day so i apologize if you guys have been messaging me on the telegram i'm literally one of the most um illiterate human beings when it comes to technology so same I could rock. I could probably still rock a Dewey Decimal system. If you drop me off at a library, I could totally do a report for you. I remember how to use it. 
and use books and find, I, I probably could still write a bibliography if I needed to. I don't even know how to do that with the internet, but, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very, so I apologize. If y'all have sent me messages and I have not answered it, I'm not ignoring you. <laughs> I just literally don't know. I have messages. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so funny. I think a lot of us divine feminine are technologically impaired. That's where I married somebody who is technologically savvy. And my son is too. My son can tell me, my son always like makes fun of me. He's like, really mom, really mom. No, 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 no. Bring, bring that over here. Let me, let me teach you. Okay. I'm like, how is it that you who is 20 years younger than me? Cause I had him when I was 20, know all this stuff. And I don't, he goes, mom, you're just an old soul. I'm like, yeah, you are too. No, you're you're an ancient soul. You're a grandma. <laughs> you're yeah, you're a grandma in soul years. <laughs> I mean, I I get I get. Well, I'll be honest with you. I get overwhelmed with technology. I'll give you guys an example here. Um, you see how many text messages I still have to check? <laughs> like, I thought I was bad. I get overwhelmed. It gets overwhelming, and I don't. Yeah. I, I just um, you know, it's it's uh. And I've got, I just get, I have, you know, it's just, then I'll get to researching and I'll put my cell phone up and, you know, and I just forget to like respond sometimes. <laughs> and, um, I'm like that too. Not, maybe personal. not that to that caliber, but I thought seven unanswered messages on my phone were bad yesterday. <laughs> I had 23. I had 42 before I started filming and then I went and Okay. Them. You made me feel so, much better. Yeah. I had 42. So, um, and some of them, I, I, I feel bad because, but yeah, have you ever been that way where someone will like text you and like in your head, you responded? Yes. It happens to me all the time. And I'm like, oh shoot. So I know like sometimes people won't believe me, but no, that's the tr truth. Like I, I, I respond in my, I'll be like driving. I don't text when I'm driving. I'm very careful. And, uh, so it's like, I, I go to respond in my head. You know, if I'm like in the middle of shopping and stuff like that, but I'll get home and I completely just, yeah, yeah. forget. I'll, uh, we'll see. We can't wear hands. We are in Georgia. You can't hold your cell phone in your hand while you're driving or you can get a ticket. Um, so same we thing in Connecticut. Yeah. I, I have Bluetooth on my phone in my car. So I, I can talk to somebody while driving. I just won't text anybody while driving. Yeah. So I'll see a text. Like if I'm sitting here at my desk, like researching and my phone goes off and it's a text. I'll check it. And then I'll like make a mental note to like respond when I'm done. But then like after I'm done, I will forget or something is, you know, something else comes up that needs my attention. So yeah, I'm not good with the technology at all. I actually kind of miss living in a time uh, where we didn't have cell phones. Like I kind of miss that childhood that we had where we didn't have, um, believe it or not, boys and girls, we didn't have cell phones when we were children. We played outside with our friends, you know, I made tree forts. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, actually, that was a conversation Catherine and I had, had about how like when we were kids, because we didn't have cell phones, we couldn't text each other. So if, yeah. you, made, if you made plans to like meet your friends at the movie theater, you met your friends at the movie theater. Yeah. You back out like you, you didn't do that because you, you couldn't, you had to go meet them. And so there was um, <clears throat> more action as a child because you didn't have, you know, I like, lived on a street with 30 plus kids on it and the street over had the same amount of kids. So when we were younger, we had um, the boys on one baseball team and the girls on the other baseball team. And we played boys versus girls in baseball in the cul-de-sac. One of my best friends growing up, um, and I'm, I still actually keep in touch with her. She's like the only one I keep in touch with um, from childhood, Nicole. She lives out in Scottsdale, Arizona, and uh, she's a horse trainer. And she's like a phenomenal person. Um, her... Uh, her father was a Vietnam War vet, Purple Star, the, the work, very, very good family. They lived on the street over. I could just walk to her house um, from over the hill. And uh, so I'd hang out over there all the time. And honestly, she, her dog had a homemade, ho a home create, uh, her father created and built a giant dog house for their dog, Spike, big German Shepherd. And in the wintertime, if we got too cold and being outside, that that dog house was so warm because it was full of hay and, and hay, you know, I, you know, keeps in all the warmth and everything. So we would play like house and stuff like that in the dog house. And um, we'd go sledding. I lived on a um, house where we had a hill in the front yard. So we go sledding. 
Um, I'd climb trees. Um, us girls would get together as little girls and we pretend we're Native Americans playing out in the woods. Like, this is the stuff that I did. And I'm like, I used to think something's really wrong because my son wants to do none of that kind yeah. of stuff. I yeah. mean, my son lacked an imagination and I always blamed on the autism. I, I don't. I think it's just literally that generation. They yeah. None of them have an, um, a, a, an imagination. Now, I think that's going to come back, though. Yeah. I, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, we, our parents were more hands off with us, too. Yeah, yeah come home when it gets dark. Yeah. We, uh, they didn't know where we were half the time. Like you come home and you grab your bike and go play with your friends neighborhood. And you just, when it got dark, you came home. They didn't, they weren't looking for us. Mm -hmm. You know, they weren't, they were, we were with the neighborhood kids. They knew the neighborhood. There was one summer though. We had to be extra careful because in our area, there was a guy in a white van going around abducting kids. So we was, we were still able to go out, but we were not to go near any white vans. And then a year later, it was the guy in the silver car. So, I mean, there was some scare stuff that happened. But we but still, nowadays, parents would just lock their kids inside. Your parents are like, just don't go talk to any white fans. You're fine. Don't talk go to play. strangers. Yep, just, just, just don't talk to anybody you don't know. Just go play. You'll be fine. If you're on, go to the nearest neighbor's house. And all the neighbors were well aware of what was going on. So you could just drop in at one of their houses. And us kids, like literally 30 kids would pile in one of the houses. Yeah. Get Kool-Aid. Go down the street, go get tacos at the next house. I mean, it was like um, we did have an issue with our, our street where suddenly all the adults started to fight. So then there was segregation amongst the kids and there was like clicks. Scandal. Oh, yeah. Lots of weird, weird, weird things. Oh, welcome to the 1990s, folks. Yep. <laughs> yep. Although, but like I said, I'm, I'm happy that I feel like we're the last generation to actually have a childhood. Yeah, definitely. Soon after, I mean, I, I was in college when, um, the internet got big because I was in college and, um, at first we were not allowed to use the internet for our research because it couldn't be trusted. That was when the internet first came out. It was like, it can't be trusted for resources. Interesting. And then towards the end, that's when people started using it more, but I kind of missed that, um, air of really understanding. I mean, that's what I use now to research. I'm not going to the library. I'm using DuckDuckGo. But um, yeah, back in those days, yeah, my professors did not want us using the internet because it couldn't be trusted. We had to go use these textbooks. But I believe they were trying to get rid of textbooks. Like that's kind of their goal was to like get slowly get rid of all these textbooks, um, especially the older ones that have ac more accurate information about our history or where things come from. So, you know. If you really want good uh, to get into really some interesting stuff, go to an antique store and buy books that were written before the 1950s. I do that. And uh, I found medicine books. I found um, books with letters from years, like thousands of years worth of letters, like letters from Abraham Lincoln. Oh, yeah. You know what I was thinking about the other day? No one writes enough letters anymore. To get love letters from my boyfriends and then they would fold really them old. into a little football you know the little paper footballs that you yeah flip. yeah and and it would say to Steph with a big heart oh I never had love letters so I came across I had a high school boyfriend <laughs> Mike and I literally would get a love letter <laughs> once a week from him well, I went through some of my stuff when I was making my studio because when I moved in, I had a bunch of stuff from high school in boxes. So I started going through those boxes in these huge entire box of love letters. And I'm going through them and I'm like, Mike, was I that pathetic? <laughs> was he that pathetic? Like, oh, You're my young. God. You're a oh, baby. my God. But I wish I had that. Like, you know, you find it your, your grandpa's grandma's like attic. You'll find like boxes of love letters. And people could that. write like back then people could like really, they, they were really, you know, yeah. their words and they could uh, write these beautiful letters to people. And uh, it's just it's so easy now with text, you just text people, you know, like, Hey, what's up? Hey babe, what's up? You know, like we don't, we don't, you know, actually there's like, there was an art of wooing people in those letters, like a wooing, like courting almost like, the you love know. woo the love woo yeah I don't, yeah it's like this like juju that was like melting off it's not like you could like you weren't sexting you were like 
you know, your eyes glisten. It's just the way <laughs> people, I don't know. It was just like the way people wrote. And I'm like, that those, that. That, that's pretty much what the love letters entailed. Your beautiful eyes just melt my heart. And I'm like reading it. I'm like, that's David, sweet. do my eyes still melt your heart? <laughs> Do you agree with this, David? Because this is what my high school boyfriend. This is what I went through in high school. Do you com- do do you concur? <laughs> Am I still this way? Yeah. No. I yeah. I uh, no. I I would love to to receive something like that. Like that would be like. I think I can think. I mean, obviously, back in those days, they didn't have really have cell phones. They didn't have ways of like quick communication. But to like, could you imagine just like getting that letter from that? I still look forward to my weekly letter. <laughs> It, it would, it would, it would boost me up. It was very, it was a very high vibrational frequency thing to read. <laughs> you flip oh, to the football. Love. Our mixtapes, oh. having a boy make you a mixtape. Didn't have that. But then again, I was always too afraid to tell people what my favorite music is because I was a total dork. What did you and like? It, it was symphony orchestra soundtrack music from like all oh, the action like movies. Or- yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I like I like orchestras. I have some orchestra stuff I listen to. I was a nerd. I still listen to this stuff. Actually, it. So when I listen to that kind of music, I didn't really realize it then, but I realize it now. It activates my um, remote viewing stuff that I can do. Because I see, fu- I've always seen future stuff while listening to it, not realizing that was what was happening. And so I actually will sit down when I feel led spiritually. I get a piece of paper and I write, I actually, you know what? I've only, I've thought about actually doing a video while listening to it and then telling everybody through the that video what I'm seeing because I do, I, I'm able to like, I've seen military stuff. I, some of it's symbolic and a lot of it's literal. So I'm able to do both. And it's weird because it's like, you know, the 17th letter of the alphabet, I almost said it, always says, you know, we're watching a movie. Well, when I put movie music in, I see the movie. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. That would be interesting. It's like, video it's like, that. like the soundtrack of what is happening. And then what I'll do now is I confirm it with my cards. You got, you've gotten good at the cards. Yeah. I, if we do this in group now, <laughs> anybody want a card reading? <laughs> We practice, guys, because listen, I've got, I've got. Three yeah, we practice now. all the times. So we've got three stacks of cards here. These are my favorite. This is the first cards I ever got, and I got them long before the Great Awakening started, and I never used them. They're the Jungian cards. Um, <clears throat> apparently, I was telling Stephanie. Apparently, they're like the most advanced cards because there's nothing. They don't have any. They're beautiful. They're pretty though. Um, and I got an easier stack of cards thinking, oh, I'll le- learn these later. So <laughs> actually very much. These are like the ones that I'm really drawn to, but yeah, Stephanie's gotten pretty badass at her card reading. So. Two tarot decks. Late seers and the magic seer. Yep. And I've got the angel cards as well. I don't use those as much though, as I've been using, but te- Stephanie, Stephanie's gotten badass. Like she, I text her all the time. I'm like, Hey, check, check her cards. <laughs> check her cards. What's this? What's this? What's going on? so um it's so weird because i feel like i'm i'm really good at reading for people i don't know very well because i have no there's no ego to get in the way yeah i think i I think that's true i think and i I thought of that before and i guess this is a question asked janine like do you is it is it customary to read on yourself like is that normal or do you go to someone else to read for you so i think a lot of times angel cards are very good for like you could pop one card, you know, just let one card pop out of, you know, when you're, um, <clears throat> when you're, uh, you know, daily mm-hmm. kind of give you some words of wisdom. Um, and I, I do that. I have a couple of angel card decks or Oracle. And then, um, like I have a light seers deck uh, or no, I'm sorry, not a light seer, uh, a light worker Oracle deck. And then I have a couple angel cards. Um, and uh it, it's it's good for like a little boost and then um sometimes when i'm doing actual readings i might ask those cards to kind of clarify the tarot or the tarot clarify the angel like i'll spread out all of my decks all at once for one question sometimes i've seen a lot of, we've, we've watched a lot of tarot readers do that where they use multiple decks to clarify things so 
y'all it's it's fun this new world where we're uh walking into is super fun super oh yeah yeah my friend makes fun of me because i say oh witchy witchy all the time so um anyway yeah it's you know what if you told me i was doing gonna do any of this a year ago i would have said yeah you're smoking something really weird um (laughs) but girl listen so stephanie knows what's going on with me too and if you had told me six months ago i would have told you you were crazy so i get it i get it well i think too you know they say the the past so the solar eclipse was the closure of an 18 month period and it's the ending to old timelines and the ending to old belief systems and i will say this my belief system is not at all what it was a year ago right whatsoever if you told me that christianity was really a mithraism based religion to keep you in fear I would have been like, you need to read the Bible more. Let's and now I'm like, it is. Christianity, the Orthodox or not Orthodox, the, um, the church based Christianity is a form of Satanism. <coughs> mm-hmm. That's pretty That's- sick how uh, twisted things got, but it's like, and this is why we do these deep dives on people like the people who wrote the uh, left behind series or Constantine or any of that, because we're always told, no, you must believe this. Okay, we do have free will to think what we want, but we have to, we have free will to go and say, okay, well, I want proof then that this is the correct way to think. And so instead of saying and complying with the obedience of an organized religion, we've taken it upon ourselves to do some more digging into it. Like, okay, but, but if fear is not good, if fear feeds the beast, why is something that the foundation is on a holy loving God revolving around fear. And it, you know, once you understand that what fear does, it, you know, Christianity makes no sense anymore. Yeah. I'm not saying that there isn't truth about Christianity because like Janine got 30% of the Bible wasn't tampered with. Mm-hmm. She got about 70% give or take that wild 70%. I honestly wasn't, I wasn't shocked. I was actually shocked. It wasn't like 80%. And that's just what the cards were telling her. Maybe we're not ready to hear that more is tainted. You know what I mean? Cause the cards are going to only tell you what you're ready to hear. Yeah. But well, we've seen that. How many times have we gotten to stop with the cards? Like don't go past go. We're not going to tell you yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've no. gotten that quite a bit in a couple of card readings that I've done. Like, no, no, no. You need to leave this one alone. You'll you'll find out. They need to leave it alone right now. Yeah. You're not ready to hear. Yeah. And Janine got that in one of the questions too, that we for, for Moses, like it's not time yet. Yeah. To reveal the truth. So yeah. Well, I know Stephanie, you have to hop on with David. So if y'all aren't following along, Stephanie is a regular guest now with David Zublik. So I will put a link to the dark outposts down below in the description box. Are you, are you going to do left behind there with him as well today? No, I'm actually going into um, herbal medicine, how I detox my son um, from heavy metals, how I created my own tinctures and my healing oils and ointments. Um, so we're going to be going into a lot of holistic medicine stuff, uh, you know, herbal juju stuff, uh, you know, the, the herbal it. woo. We're going to go I into the herbal it. woo. I love it. That's what our, that's why we were burned at stakes before. <laughs> yep. I'm, you know, it's funny when I was a little girl, I was all into um, taking my grandmother's uh, bath powders and all of the shampoos and mixing them together into like a potion. And I never understood why. <laughs> Listen, making tinctures is really fun. Okay. Yeah. Making yeah. all that kind of stuff. I love mixing stuff together. So, and it's all with good intentions of healing. So I know I'm not making a witch's brew of bad spells. <laughs> so no. Let's just put that out there. No, not at all. No. Not at all. I'm excited about the new world and we're going to get more like into that side of life because that is, and honestly, I think I might've said this on beyond mystic, but it's like the more we go forward with this, the more we realize the paranormal is actually the normal. Oh yeah. It's like, you need to be in touch with the spirit realm. That's part of life. So you are. We're always told, be afraid of ghosts. You know, ghosts are scary. Well, actually, I had a paranormal experience this morning real quick. My dogs were barking at something I couldn't see, but I could feel it. 
And then my, 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 uh, my, the door, the main door we used to the house tried to open the door handle. Oh, I've had so many. It's just one of my friends. I see spear. I see ghosts too. I, I, I hear you. I feel people. I feel them more than I see that. I've seen a couple. I've seen a little boy in my house. We've all seen the little boy in my house. The ghost hunters came and did an investigation. They got, yes, there is something. There's about three entities that we know of. Yeah, it's very, you know, it's just, it is you make it is. if they're not evil and they're not evil, just make friends. Welcome to the South. Everything's haunted in the South. So, <laughs> and, and same thing with the, the Northeast. It's, portal it's a this portal is what it is it is what it is it's no big deal so yeah anyway well Stephanie I know you have to go prepare for David's show um guys tomorrow again actually this is going to be airing on Friday so I don't know when the round tables will be loaded up but we've got seven are going to be involved in two different round tables tomorrow actually three three round tables tomorrow it's gonna be a big day. Busy, so, busy day. Um, so hopefully you guys will enjoy those um again I'm gonna leave all of Stephanie's links down in the description box below Thank you guys so much for being with us during this episode. Uh, we hope everybody is doing well. Hold your head up high because I think we're close. I think we're close. I agree. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.